Welcome back to the show. Most of us can remember the first internet wave of the 1990s, a very, very exciting time. That was followed, though, by a lull in the 2000s. Though it does look like a second internet wave is ramping up. So to talk about the next internet frontier, Reggie Middleton is on the show. He's the founder of blockchain-based company Veritasium. My colleague Ed told Reggie that the social aspect is an integral component of what's happening and that he would argue it means not just Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, but also peer-to-peer -peer companies like Uber and Airbnb. So Ed first asked Reggie just how far we are into the next technology wave, and here's what he had to say. Well, with my usual disclaimer of not being able to predict the future, I think we're in the very beginning. Uh, social media and the accompanying network effects are basically a new way of doing business. Um, the traditional way of doing business um, or called pipeline businesses, basically where a company produces something internally and then pushes it out to the consumers. With uh, social media businesses or platform businesses, there's a service or a product. The vast majority of the service of the product or the service is created by the consumers themselves. And the company is simply a technology platform that allows the consumers to A, create the product or service, and B, um, distribute it amongst themselves. Um, Facebook, as a prime example, as probably the largest uh, social media platform, Facebook essentially does not sell or produce anything. It's a platform that allows users to create content, um, information, etc., that they share amongst themselves. And it creates an enormous amount of revenue for Facebook in a very short amount of time at very high profit margins. Um, contrast this to traditional media companies such as uh, Fox, where they have to spend money um, on infrastructure, plant, and equipment and uh, produce content and then push that content out. So if you look at who grows faster, Facebook or Fox, look at who has the highest margins, Facebook or Fox, or who has the largest addressable market, Facebook or Fox, and Facebook wins every time. Now, regular um, or old, older school, old school platform uh, pipeline, I'm sorry, companies are now catching the platform wave and they're trying to social mediafy or socialify their offering. So they're creating platforms. Um, examples of that would be, uh, <laughs> excuse me, somebody disagrees, most likely a uh, <laughs> pipeline company. <right? laughs> so, so examples of that would be companies that are creating uh, uh, social media networks around their offerings. Um, off the top of my head, uh, Walmart is give, get, having a go at it. Whether they succeed or not is uh, still up in the air because their primary competitor, Amazon, is very, very strong in strategy. Um, it's and they're able to make platforms. Amazon, because you know, when you think about the last generation of high flyers in the uh, uh, space, the, uh, the internet space or the technology space, Cisco, Microsoft, Yahoo, the HPs and the AOLs of the world, uh, they're no longer making the headlines, except maybe Amazon. Now, b before I go back to Amazon, let me ask you about them, because these are basically pipeline companies, as you were talking about. Brian Alexander, Raymond James, he basically says that HP at this point is a financial engineering story, and, and that's it. Are any of these companies relevant in the tech space today? Well, um, I don't see any of them relevant off the top of my head. Microsoft has a chance. Their new CEO really seems to get it. Uh, but they have a significant amount of legacy luggage to undo. Um, companies such as HP, they have a significant amount of uh, potential. But management does not seem to be willing to take the jump. You know, you really have to take risk and invest. Um, a lot of the platform companies start with close to nothing. Um, but they outrun the pipeline companies because the pipeline companies are not willing to cannibalize their own revenues. The way it works, your revenues are going to be cannibalized over um, between now and the medium to distant future. The question is, who cannibalizes the revenues? Do you do it, or does your competition do it? If you cannibalize the revenues, you take a short-term hit, which is an investment into a longer-term game. If someone else cannibalizes the revenues, then the game's over. So a lot of the legacy businesses get high off of their own cash flow supply and don't cannibalize their own revenues and don't make the leap from pipeline to platform and then from platform to extended um, network effect. So, and that's pretty much what happens to almost all the companies that make a lot of money, right. with banks being included. 
Uh, and we'll, we'll get to that, you know, because these pipeline companies that you talk about, they've been replaced by Facebook, uh, Netflix uh, is another one, Google, Apple, and of course, Amazon is still in the mix. You know, what is Amazon doing in terms of moving from so-called pipeline to, uh, to these network effects? What are they getting right? Well, Amazon understood the network effect and the economics behind it. You know, it's arguable that Amazon was never truly a pipeline company because as soon as they started selling books, they created a social contingent to the book selling, which is the reviews of the books. The reviews of the Amazon books um, created uh, a curated community and created value. It actually, there was an the actual currency that Amazon created. No, it wasn't US dollar, no, it wasn't Bitcoin, but the currency was the ratings in the Amazon system. This um, had value to anybody who received it. And so Amazon used that to leverage to sell other items outside of books. Um, because Amazon doesn't hold physical plant like Walmart or any other large retailer, they were able to work on lower margins and that currency, which is a rating system and a social media effect, gave them much more value to the end user. Um, and then they just took that and they you know, went from product to product. Now they have private labeled food. Um, and they also realized that if you could take a cost center, and if the cost center um, has a benefit to you, chances are it will have a benefit to somebody else. So they took what was a sunk cost, which is their server farm, and they outsourced it out. And now they're the largest um, cloud provider in the world. And they're doing this because they took what was a significant cost, and they just outsourced it to everybody else. Interesting. And, you know, let me ask you, when you look beyond these high-profile names that we're talking about, uh, wh what do you see in terms of, uh, let's talk about stocks, uh, compelling stocks to purchase at present prices, uh, not just the names that we're talking about, but other places in technology right now? Okay. Well, um, because I have um, rekindling uh, my advisory business, I don't want to give away um, what I would sell to others. Uh, <laughs> over RT networks, because I think that would get me in a little hot, in some hot water. But um, I can tell you that um, the disintermediation story, the pipeline, the platform to network effect story, um, is still alive and well. And um, not just small companies are capable of doing it. Um, I'm very bearish on the older school technology companies and the banking industry. The banking industry is essentially one large technology um, concern. Um, the reason is, um, as this intermediation comes forth, you're going to have uh, a lot of margins being cut. This is at the same time that the millennials are going to become the majority of the population, and they simply are adept and used to doing business over the internet. Uh, they're distrustful of a lot of the big names, just JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and they'd rather do business with Apple or Facebook or Google. Um, combine this with the fact that certain companies such as Google are making a business model out of disintermediation. They're disintermediating hardware companies, they're disintermediating um, media companies, and they will soon, they're disintermediating telecom companies. Um, even um, potentially, I don't know what the business model is around driverless cars, but even the auto industry. So as the sea change shifts from pipeline, the platform to extended network effect, um, combined with the fact that I'm relatively bearish in the market from a macro concern, um, simply because I believe you know we're about to go into a cyclical decline, uh, I would rather go short uh, the um, entities that are at risk from both uh, the paradigm shift and the fact that they're um, in a macro, uh, a null macro area, than attempt to pick small companies going long.